Okay, we're going to use mathematical induction to prove that 5 to the power n plus 9 to the power n plus 2 is divisible by 4 for n as a positive integer. So, uh, step 1, we're therefore going to see if it's true when n equals 1. So, if, let's say, f of n is equal to 5n plus 9 to the n plus 2. We therefore check that 5 to the 1 plus 9 to the 1 plus 2 is in fact divisible by 4. Uh, if we work that out, that will give us 16. Yes, and 16 is divisible by 4, so therefore we've proved in the case when uh, n equals 1. Okay, so we've done the first step. Okay, once we've done that, we then go on to step 2. Now step 2 basically says that we assume we assume that it's true for n equals k. In other words, we say that f of k is divisible by 4. And again, if we can write that out, so we can therefore say that f of k and f of k is 5 to the k plus 9 to the k plus 2, we say that that is divisible by 4. Okay, that's our assumption. And then we go into step 3. Now, step 3, we consider... Uh, we consider what happens the value of k plus 1. Okay, so let's break this down to the left hand side. So on the left hand side when we have k plus 1, our formula for f of k plus 1 is going to have to be 5k plus 1 plus 9k plus 1 plus 2. If that's our left hand side of the equation. And then we also think about well, what would happen. Um, well, on the right hand side, basically we'd have to end up with something that was divisible by 4. So from this left hand side, we need to manipulate this in such a way that we find out that this, this new thing here is also divisible by 4. Okay, so let's, let's have a go at trying to do that. So f of k plus 1. Well, let's write it as 5k plus 9, 9k plus 2, where this dot here, this is kind of like another way of writing multiply. Uh, and it's sometimes, sometimes a little easier to use uh, than the times sign. So this means 5 times 5 to the power k, and, and so on. Okay, so that's my first step. Um, now I've written it like this. I'm going to do something that looks slightly odd. I'm going to break that down into this. Okay, now at first glance that might look like a strange thing to do. Why have I broken down 5 into 4 and 1? Okay, well, the key thing is that because I've done that, I can now rearrange this. So I've got a 5k here, and I've got a 9 to the power k here, and I've still got that plus 2 there. So I can write that all together, and then the bit that I've got left is 4 lots of 5k plus 8 lots of 9k. Now, the reason therefore that I did what I've just done is because this bit here, the 5 to the power k plus 9 to the power k plus 2, well, that is the bit that I already assumed is divisible by 4. So I already know that this is divisible by 4. And then I also know that this is divisible by 4 because it's got a factor of 4 in, in both the terms. Therefore, I've shown that this left-hand side of fk plus 1 uh, gives me an answer which is divisible by 4. 
therefore I've, I've proved I've proved by induction that it's correct and I just need to finish by um, just putting some kind of terminology so if I said that uh, PK PK is true and that implies PK plus 1 is true and then I finish it off by saying since P1, since the first term is true, then PTN is proved by induction. Okay, and then in an exam, you would need to put that uh, last kind of couple of sentences to get your final mark. Okay, so there we go. So we've proved, um, proved by induction that that is, 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 is correct. Okay, and let's look at uh, one more example. Okay, so here's the second question. Uh, Prove by mathematical induction that for uh, n is a positive integer, uh, 1 plus 2 bracket a half plus 3 bracket a half squared, etc, etc, uh, is going to give me this term here, 4 minus n plus 2 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, this one is a little bit more difficult. Um, same as before though, so step 1. Uh, I just show that it's true when n equals 1. So when n equals 1, and I can just show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So when I do this, when I put n equals 1 in there, um, I'm going to get a left hand side of 1, and I'm going to get a right hand side also of 1, and therefore, okay, that's fine. I've shown that it's true for n equals 1. Obviously, in an exam, as you put the values in just to show that you have, have worked that out. Um, so therefore, we know that it's true for n equals 1, and we assume it's true for n equals k. Okay, so following the same method as before. And as before, we can kind of write that, therefore we say uh, we are assuming that 1 plus 2 a half plus 3 half squared dot 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 k half k minus 1 is equal to 4 minus k plus 2 over 2 to the k minus 1. Okay, that's what we're assuming to be true. Okay, so step 3, um, so, you know, kind of missed out steps 2. So step 2 is this assumption here. So that was step 2. And now we've got step three. Um, well, let's see what happens for n equals k plus one. Okay, now sometimes it's actually easier to, to work from both sides. We've got the left hand side and we've also got the right hand side. And we kind of work from the left hand side and then hopefully show that it's the same as the right hand side. And in this case, I think it's actually easier to show what we're trying to find on this right hand side. Well, we want as our final answer, a right hand side that looks like 4 minus k plus 3 over 2k. Okay, the reason we want that as our final right hand side is because in this equation here, 4 minus n plus 2 over 2 the n minus 1, if we put k plus 1 into this formula, into this, into this part of the equation, then we should end up with this this here, 4 minus k plus 3 over 2 to k. So that's what we're trying to find out. Okay, so we then manipulate the left hand side and, and hopefully we do end up with that. Okay, so let's have a go. So the left hand side is going to be 1 plus 2 a half plus 3 a half squared plus 4 uh, half cubed dot 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 k half 
minus 1 plus k plus 1 times half to the k. Okay, so that is the left hand side. Now I can replace all of this bit here with the bit that I assume to be true. So I can say that that is 4 minus k plus 3 over 2k. And then all that leaves me with is k plus 1 half to the k. Okay, so this is the left hand side. So I'm still working from the left hand side. Now, all I need to do from here is to simplify this uh, expression. So 4 minus k plus 3 over 2k plus, I'm going to end up with k plus 1 over uh, 2k like that. Oops, sorry, that should be k minus 1 there. k minus 1 there. Um, so there we go. So that is, um, yes, because this was the uh, term I was, I was assuming to be true. So there we go. So I've got this here for my expression from my left-hand side. Uh, I, now I can notice that if I, if I can get the terms on the bottom the same, I can add them. So if I write that as 4 minus and then 2 bracket excuse me so 2 bracket uh, k plus 2 all over 2k plus k plus 1 over 2k um, when I've got it like that form I can then rewrite that as 4 minus k plus 3 over 2k. And as you remember, this is the left hand side. Remember what I was trying to find on the right hand side, it's the same thing. So there we go, I've shown that the left hand side is the same as the right hand side. And therefore I finish it off in exactly the same way. So I've shown that pk is true and that this implies pk plus 1 is true. And then since P1 is true, Pn is proved by mathematical induction.